As I mentioned in an earlier training video, that Microsoft introduced the ribbon back in Office 2007, replacing the menus and toolbars. It continues on in Office 2010, with the difference that you can actually customize the ribbon in Office 2010. What I mean by customize is that you can actually remove groups from your tabs here, like I can remove the font group, the alignment group, and just have the clipboard number, styles, and so on. Or I can actually hide the whole tab. I can hide the home tab, page layout, or I can actually create my own custom tab with my own spiffy name for the tab and create my own groups and name the groups and add the commands to the groups. But before I do that, I want to show you that you can actually hide or minimize the uh, tab here temporarily. For example, if I need more space here that I can view more data on my Excel spreadsheet, come up here and click on that button where when you hover over it, it says minimize the ribbon. Go ahead and click on it and it temporarily minimizes the ribbon up here to the title bar. What I mean by that is that if I need to use a command, I can just come up here and click on one of the tabs. It pops open temporarily until I actually use one of the commands like B for bold, then it minimizes back to the title bar. If I want to go ahead and restore the ribbon, just come back here and click on that same arrow and it restores it. And then you'll notice when I hover back over it, it gives me the shortcut key, Control F1, Control F1, or you can double click on any one of these tabs. So if I double click on the home tab, it minimizes it, double click, it restores it. Now let's go ahead and show you how you can actually remove groups from the uh, tabs up above or go ahead and hide the tabs. Or if there are any hidden tabs, like by default, Excel doesn't show the developer tab. So I went ahead and said, go ahead and show it. Click on it. You can see it's got the group for the codes like macros, visual basic, the add-ins group, controls group. So to customize the ribbon, I can do it one of two ways. I can either right click on the ribbon and go to customize the ribbon. It takes me to the Excel options and then I'm on the tab customize ribbon. Or of course you can click on the file tab and go down to the Excel options and just click on customize ribbon. Same window here. And then over to the right you can see a list of all the tabs that are checked are the ones that are displaying on my ribbon here up at the top including the developer which by default is unchecked. So if I go ahead and uncheck that, click OK, it's gone. Let me go ahead and right click and customize the ribbon again. And then as we covered in an earlier training video, each tab has a group. Like on the home tab, we have the clipboard group. There's the home tab, clipboard group. Within that clipboard group, we have a bunch of commands, right? So if I just click that open to expand it, there's the paste command cut, paste cut, so if I go ahead and I select the group, I get the remove option. If I select the commands, I can't remove the commands. I can just remove it as a group. So if I remove clipboard, I remove font, you're probably going, what are you doing? How do we get them back? You're totally screwing this up. Well, if I go ahead and click OK, wow. You see how I removed all those commands, but all of a sudden it opened up and expanded the other commands. So I have more of a window for my styles here. That's pretty nice, especially if I don't use those other commands. but if I made a mistake, I can go ahead and right click. And I usually tell my students this, when in doubt, just right click, you'll, you're going to get some shortcut menu and chances are you're going to get the answer that you want, like customizing the ribbon. So we go back to that and we go, well, how do I reset this? Go ahead and select the tab that you messed up on or you, you remove those groups. Then come down here and click on the reset drop down arrow and say that you want to reset only selected ribbon tab. So it'll just reset it back to its default with all the groups as opposed to resetting everything. So if you can't remember, you might as well reset everything. Go ahead and just reset that. It brings everything back, the clipboard, the font, alignment, and we're good to go. Click OK and we're back to square one. So the next thing I want to show you is that if you like what you see here and you don't want to hide or remove anything, mess with the default tabs on the ribbon, but you want to create your own, go ahead and right click. Well, let's go down the ribbon and right click and customize the ribbon. Come down here, let's go ahead and create our new tab. It creates a new tab and it's going to be between the home tab and the insert. If I don't want it there, go ahead and select it and you can move it down maybe between other tabs or just all the way to the bottom here well as far as it will go down. So it gives me a generic name, the new tab, and it gives me my first generic group within the tab. I can go ahead and select it and say I want to rename the new tab and call it my spiffy my spiffy font tab and click okie dokie and then the first group I can select that rename it and say it's going to be my font group 
And then you get the option of choosing a symbol for your group. I don't know if you recall, but when we customized the Quick Access Toolbar in that Quick Access Toolbar training video, and we added groups to the Quick Access Toolbar, remember we actually had an icon that represented that group, like for the font group it was the red letter A. That's all you're doing here is that if you decide to actually add this customized group to your Quick Access Toolbar, what icon is going to represent that group? Let's do the exclamation point. You don't have to choose one. If you don't choose one, it's going to choose a default icon for you. So we'll choose one for the font group. Let's go ahead and add another group here and click on New Group and rename that. This time we won't choose an icon. We'll just let it choose a default icon. We'll call this our Formulas Group and click OK. In any case, even though it says My Spiffy Font and I've got Font and Formulas, if I made a mistake, go back, rename it, and then just call it My Spiffy commands and click OK. So once I have my tab and I named it, I have my groups and I named it, I need the commands to be within the group so I can go ahead and select the group and say for this font group let's come over here and add the format painter, click add and it adds it below that within that group and then font color select it, click add and then font, add and then for the formulas or functions let's go ahead and say insert function add and like I said, if it's not listed under the popular commands, you can go ahead and click the drop down arrow, choose all commands, and it's alphabetized, first beginning numerically, and then it goes to the A's, B's, C's, D's. Let's do conditional formatting. If you try to double click on it, it won't add it, so I have to use the add button. And of course, you can always select it and remove it from there, but I'll go ahead and leave it as is. Let me check my developer because I'd like that to show back up again. And then when I'm finished, go ahead and click OK, and there we go. My developer tabs back up and then my spiffy commands. Click on that and hey, cool. I've got my font group, I've got my formulas group, and then as I mentioned, if you want to add this group to the quick access toolbar, remember the icon that I selected? If I right click on here and I say go ahead and add this group to the quick access toolbar, remember it's the exclamation point for the font group, but I didn't choose one for the formulas, so if I right click here in a blank area and I say to add that, okay, this is coincidental. Actually, it looks like the same one as the conditional formatting, but if you don't pick it, that's the default icon that you get. So even if you didn't add this conditional formatting to it, and you just had insert function, it would still have the same icon. It's the default generic icon. So I can come up here, click on it. I get the group, as you see down below, and it works just the same. You know, If you don't want to use Arial for that cell A1, say it's going to be Calibri. Now it's Calibri. Click on the Home tab, it's Calibri. You may not want to use the same commands on your new tab unless the tab is your dream commands here, all the ones that can just keep you working on one tab so you don't have to bounce around from tab to tab. And then when you're finished, you can go ahead and right click and, and customize the ribbon. And you can do one of two things. You can either say, well, I still want to use it, but I just don't want to see it right now. I'm giving a presentation and I don't want anybody to see my spiffy commands. You can hide it and then click OK and of course it hides the tab or right click and let's customize the ribbon and select it and remove it all together. You can either remove the tab or expand it and like I said you can remove the groups. Actually you can remove the commands from it as well but that remove command is only for the groups that you create when you want to remove those commands. You can't remove the commands from any of the default tabs that Microsoft has so I can go ahead and remove that command or remove the group or or remove entirely the tab and click OK and if I want to bring that tab back I have to recreate it so it might be better to uncheck it that way you don't have to recreate it if you want to use it later